We have talked in the previous videos about the Netherlands damming the North Sea and save Europe from rising sea levels, and the byproduct of that project might be the Netherlands reclaiming the ancient land of Doggerland, which might legitimately be an Atlantis of Europe. Damming the North Sea is, in and of itself, is a crazy idea, but in the long term, it's scientifically and economically feasible. That's not the first insane idea proposed by the Dutch per se. A Dutch journalist proposed to build a man-made, 2000 meter high artificial mountain in the Netherlands. Initially, it was intended as a satire, but architects, engineers, construction firms and investors were giving serious considerations. The Netherlands is a notoriously flat country with almost one third of its entire area below sea level. And it has beaches, dunes, dams, canals, forests, flower fields. Well, it has everything but a mountain. The highest peak on the mainland of the Netherlands is called Wazerberg, and it's 322 meters high and very little in size. In comparison, the Statue of Liberty in New York is about 90 meters high, which means if you stack 3.5 Statues of Liberty, you get the Wazerberg. Next in line, or rather in size, is the St. Peter Mount with 171 meters altitude. Well, in general, there is hardly any mountain in the Netherlands. This partially might explain why bikes are so popular over there. It's just a flat land. And I have observed one interesting analysis. When you look at the Netherlands Olympic record in the Winter Olympics, unsurprisingly, all of them bite speed skating, a sport which does not involve any elevation and altitude. But interestingly, if you look at Norway's record, which Norway is the most mountainous country in Europe, almost every single gold medal is achieved by a type of sport that involves altitude exercise and training. So this is why this journalist named Thijs Zonnewald proposed to build a 2 km high man-made mountain to open ski resorts, villages and tourist attractions on it. Usually, Dutch athletes go to Germany, France and Switzerland to learn how to ski. The artificial mountain will allow them to train at home and possibly do better at ski sports at the Olympics. Well, let's talk about the feasibility of this project. It was first suggested to build this mountain in the northeast of the Netherlands in the reclaimed province of Flauwland. It's the youngest and flattest of all Dutch provinces. For a solid 2 km high mountain, it would take up to 7.7 .7 billion cubic meters of sand. It's doable, but it will be twice as hard as the world is running out of sand. The weight of this mountain would alter the landscape sinking the ground by up to 100 meters for distances up to 50 kilometers. It's also possible that it would affect sea levels by isostatic adjustment. As we have talked in the Doggerland video, where the isostatic adjustment was one of the reasons why the vast land disappeared, as the glaciers slowly lost their weight, Doggerland started to sink below sea level. Building a mountain this big would also possibly adjust the current isostatic formation around Netherlands and bring catastrophic results. To avoid this problem, Zonerwald proposed a hollow mountain that would save an enormous amount of raw material. But lighter, as we all know, doesn't necessarily mean cheaper. Even building a mountain out of Lego pieces would be unaffordable. At a rate of one Lego piece per second and one worker, this 2 km high mountain would take about 729 billion years. Mathematically, the entire human population could be employed around the clock for the next 104 years. It would also not be financially feasible as the price tag for the whole of the project would be around 7 trillion euros, which is almost one third of the entire GDP of the European Union. The project of this kind is hard to do in real life and almost hypothetical. Personally, I think if people like Zonewald want to build a mountain in the Netherlands, they should start building it not from sands and stones, but out of garbage plastics that are spread in the oceans. Every single year, approximately 100 million tons of plastic are generated globally, and unfortunately, 10% of that plastic ends up in the oceans. The perfect place where to take plastic from is the Great Pacific Garbage Patch in the Pacific Ocean. The size of the patch is indefinite as it's not one collected thing at one place, but rather spread out debris. Estimates of size range from 700 square kilometers, about the size of Texas, to more than 15 million square kilometers, about the size of Russia. Approximately 87,000 metric tons of plastic inhabit the patch, and in total, 5.5 billion tons of plastic garbage remains in the oceans and land. 
If anyone wants to build a mountain, they should take garbage plastic as a free resource and start building. It will be a lot faster and safer as well. That's like hitting two birds with one bullet. We would have clean oceans and a mountain for a much lower price. Well, that's pretty much it. What do you think? If anybody wants to build a mountain, how they should do it? Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. And thanks for watching. Support channel on Patreon and subscribe not to miss upcoming episodes.